to create the add-on gears program for the Tetrix robot. Uh, the first thing we need to do, as always before programming, is make sure our SMAC editor is set up so our program knows exactly what components are on our robot. So in my main project center screen, I'm going to open the SMAC editor and uh, my SMAC editor looks like this. Um, with my motor controller in port 1, I have an ultrasonic sensor in port 2, a light sensor in port 3, and a touch sensor in port 4. Uh, connected to my motor controller, I have my DC motor, um, which I put as left wheel. My um, second port of the DC motor controller is my right wheel, making sure to reverse that wheel. Um, and then I have a HT servo controller daisy chain to the motor controller with one TouchX 180 degree servo in the servo port 1. So that is what my uh, schematic editor looks like and I'm going to save and close that. So then the next thing I need to do is create my add-on gears program. So I'm going to click on the programs folder and I'm going to go to new VI, so new virtual instrument and I want VI for NXT EV3 target and this one is called add-on gears. So I'm going to minimize my front panel. I don't need to work on that today. Uh, my block diagram is where I'm going to put all my programming and the first thing we want to do is have um, our program run continuously. So I want to use a while loop. I'm going to right click to pull up my uh, functions palette and click the push pin to get it to stay. I'm going to go to programming, structures, and while loop. So I'm going to drag out a while loop. Inside the while loop I need to put uh, a screen update sub VI block. So I'm going to right I'm going to go to my functions palette and select a VI and I want screen update sub VI. And if you have trouble finding your screen update sub VI block, please let your teacher know so that they can help you. Um, the next thing I want to do is put in some programming function blocks. So I'm going to go to programming and I want to go to numeric. And I'm going to put in a subtract and a multiply. Um, I also want to use this max and min block. So I'm going to go ahead and also um, pull in from the programming menu. So I'm going to go programming and comparison and I'm also going to pull in a less or equal to. Okay, so uh, first thing I need to do is um, this multiply needs to have a constant for its y value to be able to multiply to. So I'm going to create a constant at its y value and put that at 1.2. So what I want to do next is to take the ultrasonic value, so, so the sonar distance, and uh, feed it into the subtract function block and I'm going to create a constant of y for um, an 8 and then that is going to, so the result of that, x minus y, is going to go into the multiply and that result is going to be multiplied by 1.2 which is going to go into the x part of my max and min block. So really what I'm trying to do in this program is to have the robot determine if it is 8 centimeters or fewer away from an object and if it is then it's going to stop the robot.
So then the next thing I want to do is to have something to compare to in this max and min. And this max and min is not a block that we've seen before. Um, the max and min, if you notice, it will compare your x and y values and then returns the larger value um, at the top output terminal and the smaller value at the bottom output terminal. So it's really taking the x value in and the y value in. It's determining which is larger and the larger one is going um, out the top and the smaller one is going out the bottom. So on this one I need to have it send that value that it gets from this max and min to my motors. So I'm going to go ahead and go to input output and move motors. And I need to initialize those motors. So I'm going to create a constant on the top port, uh, port. Click my down arrow to make two motors. And I'm going to have my red uh, port B uh, left wheel and my blue port B right wheel. And I'm going to click and drag to select my initialization box to move it to the outside of the while loop. Because remember, if I leave it inside my while loop, nothing on the outside of that loop structure can use that initialization box. So then I just need to reconnect my wire for my power wire, my motor wire. And as I said before, I'm taking the minimum value um, from this max and min and I'm feeding that to the power of my motor. So that way it will uh, gradually slow down my robot as it's seeing an object closer to it. So I'm going to connect that to my red motor, my left wheel, and then I want my blue motor to share that same power. So I'm going to connect those two wires together. And I have to have my max and min also have another value to compare it to. So I'm going to create a constant at the Y port and I'm going to have this one be 100. And then after um, my, power, my motors run, I want something to break my motors. So on the outside of my while loop, I'm going to go to input output and stop motors and these motors are the same motors that I had earlier, the left and right wheel. So I'm going to connect to the power wire and make sure you do so outside the while loop. I'm going to connect my NXT wire to each function block to show the program the order that the program needs to be done in. And then right now I don't have anything stopping my while loop. I have nothing connected to my loop condition. So that's why I'm going to use this less than or equal to block. And that's going to take the um, sonar distance. So I'm going to take the sonar distance again. And that's going to go into the x value of my less than or equal to. I need a number to compare to. So I'm going to create a constant for the y part of 8. And then the result is x less than or equal to y, so true or false. That result, that Boolean value, is going into my loop condition. So it's determining when to stop my while loop. So now I need to make sure that I don't have a broken arrow up at run. If I did, I need to click on that and check my errors. Um, since I don't, I can deploy to my NXT brick. Now make sure that you're connected to your NXT and your robot center screen. Um, so that way you can deploy. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy. And it says that I need to connect my device, of course. So I'm going to turn my device on, my NXT. And when I deploy, it says, uh, warning numeric type may lose accuracy. And if I double click it, it shows me exactly where it's looking at um, for the accuracy. So if you notice, there's a difference between this yellow wire, which is still a data wire, but it is a 
64-bit real number. So real number meaning um, any number, positive, negative, decimals, everything, um, with a 15-digit precision. The blue wire is still a data wire, but it's an integer. So that means positive and negative whole numbers only, so no decimals. So that's the only difference between these two uh, wire colors, the yellow and the blue. Um, they're both data wires. And so our error just says that um, numeric, errors, numeric type may lose accuracy because it's going from an integer uh, to a real number, so a whole number to a decimal. And in this case for our program, that's okay. It's not going to uh, make a difference in our program. So I'm going to go ahead and click continue and then download to my NXT and then be able to uh, run my program.